and I brought up the number 53 ranking. And if this was some schools, preferably in the SEC or most notably in the SEC with like Georgia and Alabama, they seem to make a late run. It seems to be the style of the powers in the Big Ten, Ohio State, Michigan, to lock up those recruits early and then cement those relationships, get the commits in and have that locked down. So it's not so much for me that the ranking concerns me about Michigan's 2023 class and where it's going to land. It's what players are they in the running for who's on the board. And that seems to be narrowing because they keep missing out on guys. And I wouldn't expect that if somebody's going to commit to Notre Dame, and that seems to be one of Michigan's main competitors for a lot of these kids, that they're going to be, there's the whole lot of kids that flip once they commit to Notre Dame. So it just seems like the field's narrowing. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll say this, you know, I will say even in past classes, Michigan has gotten the majority of their commitments from, you know, after July, after the 1st of July, most of these commitments come. So that is definitely the strategy. I would be confident and optimistic if Michigan was leading for a lot of these recruits and commits that are committing, let's say, tomorrow or next week and things like that. But it seems like other teams are coming in and they're the leader in the house. Um, you know, even there are, are some guys that they go to Michigan, they visit, then they're either committing, verbally committing to them behind the scenes or, it, you know, a crystal ball will come in and Michigan will be leading the way. Well, then – Another program at some point comes in with some big offer and then Michigan's off the board. So Michigan is like in the top three for all of these guys that they want, but they can't seem to close on this cycle, which is the, the frustrating thing. And I think to your point, you know, the 53rd class, there's you can't possibly move up into a top five class if you start at 53. You know, Michigan in the past, it's you're moving up from 20 to 30 up to a top 10 class. That's a long way to move if you're at 53. So I, I think they will get better. I think, you know, as the season goes on, because here's the one thing, Mark, that I think will happen. A couple things that I think will happen here throughout the season. A, a lot of these programs are selling hope right now. They're selling, we're going to be this next team. We're going to be this next program. You look at a Miami, you look at a Michigan State with Mel Tucker. You look at a lot of these programs, they're selling hope. What happens when those teams go eight and four? You know, and then if Michigan can go 10 and two or something like that, Michigan will claw its way back and make it back into the into those high rankings. And I think they'll make a splash. Um, but it's it's going to be a long way to go. I also think the other parts of that is there are programs out there that I know for a fact are literally paying for guys just to verbally commit. Verbal commitments don't mean anything. We know that, Mark. How many how many flips happen on National Signing Day or throughout the whole class? It's a nightmare for you to cover. I know that. <laughs> That's for sure. So I think there's going to be a record high in terms of decommitments, flips, that type of thing over the course of this season because of – how everything's shaping out and the deals and the bidding wars and all that's going to happen throughout this football season. 